And this is the way that our love for one another should be. You know, they become the sun, the moon, and the stars in your heart. You know, it's like the day doesn't start and the moon doesn't rise and the stars are not shining if they're not in their place in your life. And then this, we, there is the place we have to be very careful because they could become the Lord of your life. And only Jesus is supposed to be Lord of your life. You are to love that person and you are to desire that person and you, you long for their, uh, their presence. This is normal. This is the way that love truly is. And, of course, God puts passion between a husband and a wife. And it's the strongest emotion. It's the strongest feeling. Because di desire placed within man is for procreation. And it's God-given between a man and a wife. And becoming one in the spirit. Because this is what actually happens when you go into a sexual relationship with your husband or your wife. You are going into a spiritual experience. I mean, I have instructed my children. I said, don't go out there. Be sleeping with this one and that one. Because when you do, there is a spiritual connection. And things happen that are not good. And so this experience is the fulfillment of love, not lust love that comes from the Father. So God gives good advice in Second Corinthians, the seventh chapter, for Christian couples. He says, avoid fornication. In other words, you've got your partner. And then you're to meet the need of the partner. So many times, you know, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to let them know how we're feeling. And so we, we don't talk about it. But we need that communication. We need to let them know what our needs are as a mother, as a wife, as being an 80-year-old woman and looking back over my life and, and seeing how I could have made things different had I known this back then. But, we're, you know, man and woman are two individuals. And I don't know if you've read the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, but you know that's very apro for husbands and wives. I mean, the husband can be on the warpath, or the wife can be on the warpath. And there needs to be a time of coming together and getting it all leveled out. So to meet one another's need, it's not done as a duty but it's done with tenderness. You, you know, feeling the other's need for comfort, touching. And I'm going to relate this message of family relationship as to building a house. And of course, in the bedroom, this is where it's private, it's intimate, clean, orderly, a dim light. Make it, make it a place that you want to be together. And you got to lock your door. If you got children around, you better lock your door so that you can have the togetherness and forgetting the frustration, the troubles that you've been going through that day. This is a time of coming together, and the problems of the day are just to go, you know, be laid aside so that this comfort, building one another up in love. And this is a good position. A good, healthy marriage has a good, healthy sexual relationship. Not to be thought of as a duty, but the fulfillment of the love which God has brought between husband and wife. And we need to work at making a success of our marriage. Realize if you don't give love to your partner, there is another around the corner who will. And we know that in this day that we live in, in this is very prevalent. I mean, even husbands are hit on and try to be pulled away from their wives because that's what's going on in America today. So we have to really watch these areas of our lives. And... It leaves a weak place in the marriage if you are not being that partner that your, your mate needs. The 
the relationship between a husband and wife is reflected with the children. And did you know that your love relationship of God the Father through Jesus the Son is reflected in your relationship with your husband or with your children or anyone that you communicate? If you've got a good relationship with a Heavenly Father, then you can have a good relationship with your, with your mate. So and when you have that good love relationship, then we're going to see that love in the children. But if there's bickering and friction and striving, then this is also reflected around you. I mean, it's normal for children to have a little spats, but it's not normal for them to always be at one another's throat, right? I want to read a little poem that was written by anonymous there's no one that we know that wrote this but you ask me how I gave my heart to Christ I do not know there came a yearning for him in my soul so long ago I found earth's flowers would fade and die I wept for something that would satisfy and then and then somehow I seemed to dare to lift my broken heart to God in prayer. I do not know. I cannot tell you how. I only know he is my Savior now. And I just thought when I went over these notes, that, you know, this is where we need to be with the Lord. We need him as our Savior. And you know, divorce, no way that you spell it, always means that it's, it's been a failure. And that is such a hard thing to go through. And you know, marriage is like building a house. And it takes a lifetime and will take repairs here and there because time takes its toll on everything. So let's talk about the house. You know, at the front door, it's expectation. Expectation of what this is going to be, you know. And you walk to that front door and you don't know really what's inside, but there's that expe expectation. Then you go into the living room and this is a place of communication. And what do we need in our lives today is communication with one another. Then you go to the family room and this is where you uh, entertain your in-laws and your guests and even your children in the family room. Then the kitchen is meal times. And this is where you socialize. I mean, we socialize around the dining table, don't we? Around the kitchen table. Then we have the bedroom, which is the intimacy and sexual relationship. Then the bathroom is for your personal appearance and hygiene. So then we have the nursery, and this is where husband and wives discuss children and birth control and making the decision of how many babies you want, you know, and and being in agreement with one another. Amen. Then the library denotes a place of attitudes and knowledge. You know, we need to study. We need to study the Word of God. How can we walk uprightly before Him if we don't know what the Word says? Then we have the prayer room, and this is where spiritual values. You know, God's Word, He says for us not to be unequally yoked. So we need to have the same spiritual values. In other words, believing in truth and honesty and integrity and walking uprightly before one another. Then there's the attic. What do we do with the attic? We put memories in it, don't we? We, we stick in the attic things that we're not using right now, but those are memories. And then the cost, the cost of building this house. 